welcome to our sixth webinar uh, and our third webinar in the, in the stallion management series. So a big well welcome out there. We've got looks like another bumper crowd watching tonight, and hopefully we will fulfil your what you want to see tonight. And we've got lots of things to get through. Um, first of all, I've just got to introduce tonight um, Bart Cools uh, again brought back by popular demand. I mean, the amount of people that really wanted him after the last one. So Bart Calls is the, looks after or collects off all the stallions at Paul Schockermolers and has done for many, many years. So his advice, what he's giving is absolutely invaluable. It really is. And you couldn't ask, uh, you know, if you want to ask any questions to him, there's nothing that this guy doesn't know about collecting off stallions or semen processing. So it's great to have him again here from uh, online from Germany. Um, Questions, yeah, the questions are great. We can't always get to them all, but please try and ask the questions. We've got Faye here tonight who's going to uh, throw them at me. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer them, or Bart can. So please get those questions coming to us, which, which we get in the Q&A. We've got a couple of poll questions tonight as well. Just it's always quite interesting uh, getting those, those uh, feedback from those as well. Uh, tonight cannot be run without our sponsors, so we, we're internally grateful to them. We've got two sponsors tonight. We've got Quattro Rubber Matting, uh, who did all our rubber matting in our collection area, so we're going to talk a bit about that after. And we've got McLaren Insurance, which is an independent insurance broker specialising in the equine sector, and we do all our insurance through them. So a uh, big thank you to them. We'll talk a bit about later what services they offer. Tonight, especially, actually, we're doing the giveaway tonight for the first time, uh, not the Stallion O's. So we're actually giving away uh, £100 or a gift voucher uh, away uh, for uh, any of our products that we hear or stud fees of stallions that we actually market here ourselves. So uh, one lucky person, if you stay till the end, you will get could, could well get picked to have £100 off either a collection fee or some, a stud fee of uh, one of the ones we market. So what have we got lined up for you tonight? We've got a really action packed and I know these webinars go on a bit, but I can promise you that if you go away tonight without learning something, I'll be absolutely amazed. There's so much we're going to get through tonight, all about the scene. It's going to be risky tonight. We're doing two, not one, but two live collections. So I'm slightly keeping my fingers crossed that it's going to work, but we might get a failed collection. But hey ho, that's, that's the way it works. So we're going to hopefully the boys will perform. They're not used to performing at seven o'clock at night. I must admit, it's normally for seven o'clock in the morning. So, so we're going to do the preparation of the stallion, which we're going to go and see in a minute, how we get the stallion ready for the collection. Uh, Preparing the AV, the artificial vagina. So we're going to go in there. We've got all different models and all different. And please, if you're having any problems collecting off your stallion or you've got issues, please ask away. Hopefully, I can't guarantee it, but we can try and give you some advice. Uh, setting up the collection area, how we actually set the collection area. Setting the mare up, because a lot of people jump on mares, how we set them up uh, for a collection. Washing the stallion off and how important that is before every single collection. Uh, the dummy mare uh, collection, how we actually collect. We're going to show a, a stallion jumping on a dummy mare and collecting uh, off him. We're going to try and do a ground collection as well, just another way. Well, obviously, we can't do all the different types of collections, but those are the two extreme ones. A lot of questions we've had in, how do we actually train your stallion onto the dummy? So we're going to do a little bit of that in the practical session, but Bart and myself, we're going to show you in a, in a PowerPoint presentation how we actually train these stallions onto the dummy mare as well. Washing up at the AV at the end, and then we're going to go upstairs and uh, do a PowerPoint presentation just of covering all the things that we've talked about. Uh, just to let you know, this is the, the stallion management series, and it's the second one of four. Uh, the next one we're going to talk all about, we're all lab-based after this one. So in two weeks' time, it's everything you need to know about processing chilled semen, processing and handling uh, fresh semen, and how we process semen for the stallion. Feeding uh, and collecting, it's one not to be missed. And that time, on the third, as always, these are totally for you. We run these collection courses it's obviously quite a bit money so if you can all it tonight i'd really appreciate it. it goes to the horse trust again you know horse trust obviously look after rescue horses and ponies and donkeys that are suffer, suffer cruelty and they rely on your uh, donations and lastly i've just got to thank a big thank you for british breeding for putting on this tonight again you know rachel staying up again uh, late uh, tonight working the webinar and eva's been working behind the scenes obviously putting all the presentations together as well so much appreciated 
So let's go inside and um, hopefully you'll see EJ in there. And we're just going to, slightly the wrong way round, but I thought rather than going backwards and we'll go going to start Italian. prepare for beforehand and not try and do it at the last minute. Uh, in other words, if it's an older stallion, we talked about this last week, that we, we quite often with the older ones, we put them under the lights, we put them on the horse walker. And I think Bart, you were saying you, you, you put them on the treadmill, uh, things like that. So it's really making sure they've had a bit of exercise beforehand, so we're not expecting. So, um, so this is uh, foreclosure. Yeah. You're looking well. Yeah. as well as me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, EJ, can you just explain a little bit about what you're, what you're doing here and what, why you do this? Um, yeah, so these, the, we put four exercise bandages on um, and that's just basically for support and protection so they don't um, like scratch themselves or catch themselves in the collection area. Um, also the elasticator, so they're a little bit more supporting than um, like your normal just fleece bandage. And we also put a pad underneath as well to stop any um, like pressure points. Um, and we can also we have these amazing skin bandages we spoke about. Now I haven't spoken about these. These we actually buy these in from America. And what we find is some stallions, they a lot of stallions might not need um, knee bandaging, they don't rub the knees. Uh, but some of them uh, do. And what we find with these is the, the skin bandages they, uh, when they start rubbing it, they really grip the knee. So we don't put it on all the stallions, but it really, they really, really help. We get them from America, but you find they work well, EJ? Yeah, really, really well. And they stay, they keep the bandage up. We actually bandage, we put these on um, and then put the knee bandage over the top. So usually we would have a normal knee bandage that looks a bit like this. But this is for kind of extra bit. And then extra you put one of these really. on top now. Yeah, yeah, yes. do, yeah. Yeah, and that's what you normally put this over This is a normal knee bandage that we, bandage all the stallions a bit. If they're having problems, you'll notice just behind the knee, exactly there, it will, um, there'll be a, like a graze or a, 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 a rub mark, basically. Um, it's quite so difficult, isn't it? When they start rubbing in the season, it's very hard to get it to heal again, isn't it? Because if you're collecting off them quite often. Yeah. But then skin bandage, if you're having problems, but you've got your knee bandage on already, and you're still having problems, then skin bandage is absolutely brilliant, really yeah. good. So go three times around the top with your bandage. You try and um, not bandage obviously in front of the knee. And then three times around the bottom and then back around behind the knee as well so you're not restricting the movement too much in front. This top bit needs to be quite tight for it to stay up. Um, and don't have these on for very long so it's not too much of a, an issue. And, and yeah, let's say a lot of standings can get away with this uh, when they're doing it but we do find when Start rubbing it, spray it, spray it, and you bandage the back legs as well. Yes, bandage, support bandage. Just support all bandage, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, knees in front and skins if we're having problems with yeah. rubbing. No, no, great. Well, thanks very much for that, EJ. That's all right. No. We'll see you in a minute back in the AV room. Now, yeah. Bart, you, you use leg wraps, don't you? Or you put sometimes put something else on yours? Come on down. Yeah. Um, I put only on the front legs uh, boots and um, jumping shoes on the behind legs if they have uh, shoes, because I think the, the section of the feet, if they are collecting the back feet, it's yeah. very important. That's why I put jumping shoes on the back feet and normally boots on the, on the legs. Yeah, Almost. I mean, I suppose from our side, we're just dealing with, you know, these aren't our stallions, so uh, we always extra protect, I must admit. So we go, we try and go that little bit more um, with the bandage. They do come in because obviously some of these things, we do it on all stallions as well. Oh, can you hear me? Hello, yeah. Uh, yes, I can hear. So, uh, so yeah, so we tend to bandage them, them all up. So right, we're gonna go to the AV room, so come on in. Right, if you, you go over there, Etienne. So welcome to the, we call this the dirty room or the, or the AV room. This is where we prepare all the, the AVs prior to the collection. And as you can see down here, we've got a right selection uh, tonight. We're not gonna go use obviously all these. We're gonna use the, 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 the one that uh, we've got already in the incubator, but we have an array of AVs. So we'll just start off with 
some of the different ones out there. Uh, we've got a, a uh, this is called an INRA AB. Uh, I don't know whether many of you use this particular type. It's, it's a French uh, made AB. Um, it's a bit like sort of the Colorado AB. Yeah, Manija, you will give us the door to Yeah, of course. Uh, so uh, that's, we don't use that very often. We've just in, invested in this, this new one. It's called the Photo Creo uh, AB. Um, I think made, made in Brazil. Um, and uh, yeah, we've used it a few times and yeah, it works well. Uh, again, it's just like the sort of bit like the Colorado AB. Um, this, the big Colorado AB, these are big ABs and obviously slightly depends on the size of your stallion's penis, but these hold an awful lot of water. You have to be quite strong to lift these up, but so, uh, so a different side for this. And uh, the, the name sort of, you've got Colorado, come after different cities. So this is the Hanover AB. Now, this is Bart. This is the one you use all the time, isn't it? Only I only use this this kind of uh, AV. Only this yeah. one. And does it come in different sizes, or is it just one size? No, they, um, they make a little bit wider and smaller. And if I have some some stallions who have a problem because it's in in the end it's closed with a small yes. hole with a yeah. small hole, and some stallions don't like this, and then I cut this. And make it like an open vagina. Yeah, so in here, they don't ever get their penis through there, that small hole, do they? Or, or can they? The voice seems quite small. But if, no. if they are very big, yes, they can do, but normally not. No, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, but, and you use this one with a, with a plastic liner, is that correct? Always, yeah, yeah. because yeah. I'm. I don't like to wash so much, so I use plastic. <laughs> <and> then... <laughs> You're thinking of the environment, right? Yeah. I have to admit, we don't, and it's, we always have these discussions so, and you know, when we travel around, going to different places that people collect, uh, there's a great friend in, in France, uh, Marx Bar, they use this, uh, the Inra AB, uh, obviously Bart uses the uh, Hanover AB. We use the, you can get a bit closer to this, we use the uh, Missouri AB, and this can come in three different sizes. So for the, the, the larger boys out there, um, they, can, uh, they can use the, uh, um, the, the large Missouri. We tend to use this for shires um, or you know Clydesdales or some of the big, bigger chaps. Um, the medium size. We get asked a lot of questions. What AV size should we use for our stallion? And it's very difficult because some of these little Welsh cobs, they think you know they're quite well blessed, and they yeah, they, they quite often use it just because they're small ponies. It does not mean they've got a small penis. They quite often maybe have to use a. Uh, uh, a medium size AB, and um, we've got the small AB for obviously the smaller stallions, and it doesn't go by the size of the stallions, obviously size of the penis. Some of these, I'm not going to name any names, but we'll so I get in trouble for doing that, but there's some fairly big breeds out there, and they still use the small AB. I think we've got one at the moment, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, yeah, so we've got one at the moment. And so what you do want is you want the glands of the penis, ideally at the end of the AB. We don't want them ejaculating halfway down, because these AVs are hot, if they're jacked up halfway down, they can cool the steam. Got, do you ever do an open-ended AV, Bart, or not? I do also, yeah. Yeah, I like this method. Over the years, um, we do more of this. Uh, and all we've done with this one, we've just cut the end of the AV off. And the, I'm not going to show the video tonight. I'm, I'm risking quite a bit tonight doing live collections as it is, let alone showing a an open-ended AB collection. That's for another time if you come on a course here, I'll show you that, but I'm not going to show you it all tonight. So an open-ended AB collection. And we, chop, and we use this funnel. We used to use smaller funnels, actually. Uh, got some here. Yeah. Uh, we used to use smaller ones, but we found we didn't catch it so well. So now we use these. Uh, can't miss. <laughs> that, can't miss. Uh, we literally, the penis goes in, and we put a, a bottle on at the end, and we literally just collect it like that. And what we want to do is be collecting the first two pulses. And if we're struggling to freeze a stallion, or there's a stallion which has seminal plasma toxicity effects to the semen, this I find absolutely brilliant. I really do. Uh, we don't do a lot of stallions, but we just try it. We're struggling to freeze a stallion. Do you do this very often, Bart, or not very often? No, no. I have maybe in, in all the years I have two or three stallions I use this. Yeah. Um, so we may maybe use it a little bit more when we're doing the sexing of the sea, and as you may have seen on the news, we've got a little bit of surprise for you tonight, later on if you hang on, we've got some great video footage of this, this, this sex foal being born as well. So, um, 
And uh, so we're setting the scene, we try and use this because the seam is, we find is even cleaner still doing this, getting those three fractions. It can be a bit tricky, but again, if anybody's interested after this, because it's quite a lot to get through tonight, we can always email us or ring me. I'm best on the phone, by the way, but you can always email me your phone number and I'll give you a, soon give you a call back. Uh, so that's the AVs. You can use, uh, if you've got the Missouri AV, you can use it with or without a liner. And always I expect you, you should do, if you're using it without a liner, all right? <laughs> Face pulling faces at me. Uh, is uh, if you use the outer liner, you must have one AV per stallion um, because of cross contamination purposes. But with obviously with bark, the use that bark spray is you you put a liner in bark, don't you? And you just literally pull it out and you replace it for your cleanliness. That's a very clean way of doing it, isn't it? Please again. I was saying with the with, we have to have one AV for each stallion if you don't use a liner. But you just have one AV, but just change the liner each time, yeah? Yeah, if, if I just change the liner, if I have to have a, for each day in one vagina, I need a special room only for the vagina. So, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, therefore, it's just, we just change the liner. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so we, we have to have a special room. We, we have one, one, one AV per, per stallion, but we have to make sure they're all numbered. And we just find, especially on this, the stallions do like it. Uh, some, also, some stallions we do use liners on as well. And you can get these uh, ones with filters in, uh, or you can actually uh, get the liners without filters. And uh, this is what you use. This is something like you use in Germany, isn't it, Bart? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so this can keep the se semen warm, isn't it? Yeah, that's like a thermo. Um, it's coming from also from Brazil, uh, coming, and then uh, it's uh, I have it warm, and then the semen stays. Or it's there inside is also a plastic. The semen comes inside directly. <coughs> we make a filter and everything inside. Yeah. So this this. We'll come on to the filters in a minute. Um, but, but basically with this, we can just, this one's got the filter on already, but we can get the plastic liner and we can just put the top on and we can just screw that on. And there's your uh, liner ready to go. That's the way. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It works. It's yeah. very simple and very easy. Um, right, so filters. Bart alluded to about the filters. A stallion ejaculates in three main fractions. You get your pre-ejaculatory fluid, you get your sperm retraction, and you get your gel that, that, that arrives at the end. And we don't really want the gel to contaminate our semen sample if we can help it. Um, and so that's one of the reasons we use sometimes an open-ended AV. Um, but also what we want to do is try and separate. Now some people um, let the whole ejaculate go into the bottle and then they filter it afterwards, which is quite messy and also already that semen in my eyes is contaminated in theory with smegma and maybe gel as well which can be quite toxic to, to that. So we use these filters uh, and these are filters that uh, uh, we sell, they're very cheap and very easy to use and all you do when you get the collection bottle is you literally just put your filter in here and you push your thumb in, put it around the edge and you put the elastic band around, and away you go. Job's good. You use these filters all the time, Bart, I think, don't you? Yeah, but inside the liner already, directly yeah, with the yeah. connection. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So in like that, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's how you, I do believe there are some stallions, and so I was speaking to somebody earlier this week, where some stallions got very thin gel. And you can obviously use two filters, uh, but some gel will go through this. So you can, with Minitube, do sell these, or we sell them over here, these very fine filters. They are quite expensive. And all we do with these, so we just get a pair of pliers, and we just do a little bit of a snip, just there. And now they'll poke nicely inside that collection bottle. And fit. Just like that. Perfect. So that's just another way of, of, of using the, um, the liners. 
Another little tip that we find here, and I don't, I don't think you have this problem with the Hanover Bart, but um, sometimes we get semen that's backed up here. That's yeah, not it's just, a vacuum yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. Vacuum inside. So about three years ago, we started drilling a hole. I don't think you can see that, Lucinda. Can you see the hole there? Yeah. So we drill a hole in there, and that stops the vacuum. And it, it, a little tip for you, just uh, uh, drill a hole in there. And also, we'll talk about it later, we actually sometimes put extender in the bottle for some stallions as well. So we can use that hole to squirt extender and actually dilate it out. So a nice little tip for you there, and that lets it drain straight through. Other little things, tips you've got to look for, there are sock filters, different types of filters. Um, you can use uh, condoms so there's on the horses. So this one's a bit old. I think, I think this one's past its sell by date. Um, yeah, no, it sells in the music, but it, it's... Uh, but it's, it's a pretty, it's, it's uh, yeah, anyway, this is a horse condom and they're slightly larger, but believe it or not, you can use human condoms. Uh, as a last resort, we're talking now, and uh, we've used it on the odd stallion. Uh, I mean, really, where uh, we've tried everything else and we can't get them to work, uh, you can actually use uh, a human condom as well, so that works. Uh, and there's all different types of lubes out there. Be very careful with the lubes. I think, Bart, you, you don't use any lube with yours because you've got like a plastic liner, no, is that you, right? No, if you use a liner, um, there you have always uh, two, three drops of, of pre-occulation and that's enough. Mm. If you use a liner and some glue, or especially if they use too much glue, then um, it's too glitchy and the stallions are hot and they cannot um, um, give the semen. Yeah. So, uh, therefore, we don't use any glue because with a liner you don't need. Yeah, but with it, with an ordinary AV, you, 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 you do, but we'll show you that in a minute. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got a question come in. Um, if you have a stallion that's used to natural service, do you find it easier to train him to an AV without a liner, or does it make no difference? I find the, the bar, the question now, I don't really hear that question, but we, Somebody's asking if the stallion was doing natural covering, uh, is it easy, easy to train them with or without a liner? I, every stallion I find is slightly different. Some prefer the AV uh, as without a liner. Some don't mind the, li don't mind, don't mind the liner. Sorry, I'm going to get my words out. It was that beer that I had earlier, I think. Uh, and uh, so it is bearing. But if they're quite keen, we find they're usually easy to clip from. If the libido's poor and they're a bit fussier, they may be a bit more tricky. But a lot of stallions come to us have done natural coverings all their lives and they, you can still collect from them, so, yeah. Right, EJ, do you want to show us how... Um, on, yeah. Quick question as well, actually, from Shirley Light. Oh, good night, Shirley. Hello, Shirley. Under what circumstances do you use a human condom? Um, <laughs> Trust you, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you for that one. Amazing. Um, if you... If you we have the odd stallion we just could not collect off and we're slightly different from like Bart's scenario. Bart's scenario, he's got his own stallions. I know you're real pressured, but if, whether it takes a week to collect off them or a day to collect off them or two weeks to collect off his stallions, I, I hope I'm saying the right thing, Bart. It doesn't matter. With us, we have to collect tomorrow and we have to, no matter what the client wants, it's a new stallion in. So we have to turn these stallions around very quickly. So if there was, um, if we, they just didn't like the AV and we've had the odd style. I mean, I reckon once a year, we do about 120 different stallions here a year, and I reckon once a year we might, uh, not even that, maybe once every two years, isn't it? Not very often, we might even put a condom on, so that's, that's why I show it. Yeah. Right, filling the AV up. There's two different ways, or a few different ways of filling the AV up. So you can actually, with a Missouri AV, because I know most people in the UK use the Missouri, uh, we, we pop the... Pop the, you can use a, a drenching syringe and then you can just get a jug. Which, uh, up here, just grab a jug here. Oh, there we go. So we can just fill a jug up and, and pour it in. Or you can get, get a funnel. With these are quite you can kind of make your own thread on them as well. You can kind of twist them on because they actually stay on a bit better. And then you can obviously just pour and fill the AV up. Be careful okay. you don't hold on to the lower bit down because it's quite hot. So I would always hold higher up on the either, yeah. either one. So right, if you undo that. Um, the next, uh, this, so this is a, a way that we set up here. 
if you are using a jug, like a lot of people might not have had this system, basically you want this water about 65 degrees roughly for a, a normal cold AV, 65 to 70. You're filling this jug roughly with uh, three parts boiling to one part cold will be round about that temperature, but obviously we have this set up. So this is how we do ours, okay. Um, so undo the main body. They can put air in them, so be careful you don't um, just undo the black black bit because they are they're like a carter you can put air in them as well and um, to so make sure they undo the main body of the AB and then this little tap connection here twist that on I usually lose a little bit of hot water run out first just to make sure you've got the hot coming through connect all that up I, may, I always lift it up a little bit so you push it down you can hear that noise so if you lift it up a little bit let the let the water go in Nice and smoothly. It's tilting. Yeah. Not to get too much water everywhere. <laughs> you don't burn yourself. And it just takes, uh, it didn't take long to fill. With a funnel, it takes a little bit longer, but we have a big boiler under here. We can fill five or six AVs, literally, literally on, on the go. Um, and okay, then take that off. So you fill it, fill it up a bit. You can see a little bit of air happening here. So what you can do is take you tap off and kind of get that air out, put it back on, just to make sure. As soon as you take undo the, um, the cap, the air will just make it too flat and then it might not be tight enough for your stallion. So that's perfect. So just tip it over to the side, get your stopper ready, and put that in nice and quick so you're not losing too much water. Rachel, uh, I don't even hear me, but can we do one of our poll questions now while we're carrying on? So the first poll question, is uh, it's just quite interesting to know out there what type of AV do you all use or what, what type of AV do you mainly use? What? You know? It was just a question. Oh. Yes, there we go. There we go. Uh, do you use A, a Missouri? Uh, number two, uh, Colorado. Three, INRA. The German model, the Hanover model, or Bart's model, I should say, uh, or something else. So uh, we'd just be quite interested in you uh, on, on, on that particular poll. So we've got the leather case on, the little things with the leather case, these leather cases do sometimes stretch a bit, so we always put a washer on here, and, um, and then we're gonna put the, the, the collection bottle on. Oh, you're here. Oh, you're here. So um, you wanna come around this way. So, and all we do with this is we can just pull it apart, and then we just take it off. And that's it. It's nice and secure. It should hold when it's dry on the inside, but if you do get a failed collection, it's wet inside here. You might want to put a little bit of tape, maybe a little bit of electrical tape around here just to keep it on, stop it from being knocked and sliding off. Has the, has the poll questions come back yet, Rachel? Let me see what they what they say. Majority of Missouri. Yeah, a lot of English yes. people out there are afraid. <laughs> most, of them, most of them are Missouri. Let's have a look. Missouri. 70% Colorado. 12% in uh, Hanover, so there must be a few German people watching tonight. And 15% other, it'd be quite interesting what other people um, are using. Yeah, not oh, very good, that's it. So, um, so, yeah, with this, I have to admit, I, I don't like taping it on the odd time, like tonight it might fly off. I must admit, the only time it takes this time to fly off is when people are watching. Uh, we've got quite a funny video of actually this flying off and going straight into the mailbox, but I don't tend to tape it on uh, because it, when you come in here, you want to pull it apart and straight in there. But as EJ said, if you get a failed collection, you do want to tape it on because the second time it might well come off. And then we put a, a bottle warmer. So you want something to stop the, if you're collecting outside any UV rays, but also some way of protecting this, uh, uh, keeping it warm. Yeah, Faye? Uh, question come in. How do you clean the Missouri? We're going to come on to that in a minute. So. Uh, EJ is going to give us a, a <laughs> tour on how to clean an AV. I've got to really bite my tongue tonight. There's so many things that could come out, so I'm trying to be trying to be behave myself tonight. PC. Uh, so that's the AV filled, um, and as on Blue Peter would say, here's one we a couple we prepared earlier. Uh, so we have this uh, set of 50 degrees these incubators, and we have we can get six AVs in here before we start collecting. Um, and this will keep the AVs at the, at the correct temperature. A point of collection, we tend to have it about sort of um, 45 to 50 degrees. I don't know, Bart, whether you ever, 
you just do it on field. You never take them. Presumably, you never test the temperature. You just have to see how it feels. Is that right? You there, Bart? I'm there. Yeah, I didn't hear what you say. I was saying on the temperature of the AV, you just do it how it feels to you. You don't take the temperature, do you, or do you? I have, I, with my ANOVA, I have my, the water coming out at 56 degrees. And then I feel the first time in the morning, maybe I have to put some water out and make it more warm again. But normally you feel directly if it's around about yeah. 40 degrees. Yeah, we do about 40, 45 to 50. Basically, if you're putting your hand in there and you can't keep, if you think it's, to me, if you put your hand in there and think, oh, this is nice and warm, it's normally hot enough. If you put it a bit hotter, uh, you've got a much more better chance. So obviously, you want to make sure you keep your hand in there. We've got a funny question. I can see Faye <laughs> laughing, so it must be a funny question coming in. Georgia just says, um, I can't imagine how you can fit a human condom on a stallion. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> it's back to that one again. Yeah, it's not my size. It? How do you do it? Well, I would think it would strangulate the penis and hurt the stallion. No, it doesn't. I can promise you it doesn't. But we have got, I have, we've got videos of how we do it, but I must not, I'm not sure tonight. I'm worried I'm going to get into trouble as it is, let alone show videos of how, how we put condoms on horses. So I'm leaving that one off tonight. Uh, but we can explain a bit about it, but I promise you it's, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, they don't strangulate the penis, yeah. Yeah, no, no, we, we do have another question, um, incubator oh, related as oh, well. Go on, yes. yeah. Um, why do you fill them um, with 66 to 70 degrees when the incubator will cool them to 50? Because uh, we have to, because the AV is already cold, so this AV is only 20 degrees, so we have to put hotter water in for it to cool down to that. Most of it, when we do work out in the Middle East and places when it's really hot, we put maybe 60 degrees or maybe 55 degrees water in there. It depends on the ambient temperature, really, of your AV on that. Uh, just a guide, that is, by the way. Uh, yes. Yeah, point of questions, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. Uh, oh, we, we better, yeah, we better just lubricate this AV. So, we get the glove on. And... This is the sort of the important side to it is um, you just put a rubber band on. Now this is the, I reckon the, one of the first mistakes that most people make when they're collecting off stallions, when they go into a place, one of the things that you should see is how much lube they're using. And I don't know whether you can see it, it's barely a five pence piece. It's a tiny, tiny amount. Where is it? It's a, sorry, it's there on the <laughs> Oh yeah, sliding yeah. down. Yeah, sliding down. It's tiny. I'll try and do a bit on here. You can see that. That's all you need. Uh, and then you round your hand, and then you just do it round the AV and just put your hand inside the AV, and that is fine. All right. So, like Bart, you don't use any lube but on these AVs. Obviously, you do have to. You do. I've seen people put like a, a golf ball size, and all that lube will go down to the end. So. Right, okay, let's move into the collection area. You can see we're gonna. Right, so. Can you get my clipboard in the picture? So I know where I'm at. Uh, so, setting up the, 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 the uh, collection area is one of the first things uh, we do. And so, we've rubberized all, all, all this here. And one of the main sponsors tonight is, uh, is Quattro. Uh, Quattro has been supplying uh, and fitting rubber flooring since 1986, uh, not only to the UK but all around the world. And they supply all this rubber matting in here. They did all the walls. Uh, you can see here, I don't know if you can see my feet on here, but it's sinking in. So on this bit here, it's, we've got like a springy step for the stallions so that they can grip onto. And uh, we use these, this for reflecting on a mare. Or up on the dummy. And on here, Potter is finding this um, like a diamond shaped uh, rubber, rubber mat. Bart, you've got a, a rubber mat, haven't you? Just the other side of your dummy mare, is that right? Yeah, I have a rubber mat behind my dummy mare, but my complete ground is rubber. But um, like you, you can throw water in, and the water goes down and it's go away under the rubber. So therefore, it will never be glitchy or nothing. So that's very important that you yeah. have good, not slippery rubber with, with water. 
And it's um, just when you're clicked, setting up, so I can see some of the, sometimes we've got our walls done, and, and you can see where sometimes the standings have kicked out on the, on, on, on the matting. So this, this matting's really good. I have to admit, I know they're sponsoring tonight, and know we've got to give them a plug, but I have to admit, Quattro have done an amazing job in this, in this collection area. And even here, they've set up, um, set up the AD League, uh, and this is our ground collection box. So uh, we'll talk about ground collection later. I think, Bart, you collect in, the, in, your, in your stables, don't you? Yeah, uh, I have two or three stallions. I only collect in the stable. Yeah. So we, we I think we call this the, uh, the red room, right now, out of Fifty Shades of Grey. This is our, one of our padded rooms. Uh, tonight, the ground collection stallion, we find with some big stallions, they're better actually doing it in the collection area. Most we do in there, but tonight we're actually going to do it in, in here. Uh, so, wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah. so the dummy mare, uh, where it's situated, um, we, again, I think yours is in the middle of the room, but we have ours a bit closer. Um, and basically, your teaser mare box, uh, you show that this always wants to be ideally, uh, just to, uh, in an ideal world, either in front of the dummy mare or uh, just to one side. So when you're teasing the mare, and then we're literally bringing them back and uh, they jump on the dummy. At our old place, we made the mistake of having a teaser box here. So we tease the, the, the mare uh, here, and the stallion is just trying to jump over you to get to the dummy. So we find it's much better to have them on this side. So, uh, right, can I give you that number, please? EJ, if you can. You can be our perspective. We've, <laughs> we've got to be a bit role play. Just pretend I'm silent for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry. Don't have to be bad. <laughs> uh, uh, um, so if you, put, you can come up here like you can do a collection. Yeah. And it's basically, you want to place the AB nice and tight in here. And basically, the penis can, can go either side of this, this dummy. And what you don't want to do is... is um, is, is, is grab it and pull it across, all right? So what you want to do is grab it, push it down, and pull it around and in, all right? Yeah. So, oh, sorry, all right, can you hear me now? Yeah, is that better? So you want to pull it down, and, and what you don't want to do is, is try and, with, it, with that uh, hand, you want to try and be fairly relaxed with it as much as you can, and go with the stallion. You don't want to be pushing it on and off the stallion at all. The other thing with your other hand, you want to be grabbing underneath uh, here and squeezing. Some stallions like it, some don't. Uh, some are best just leaving totally alone, and some do like to be squeezed there. So if you're struggling to cut off a stallion, just squeezing that little bit can make all the difference. Um, and yeah, and when the, as soon as he ejaculates, uh, you want to make sure you put the, the AV down. If you lift it up, the next thing you see is the semen coming out. So as soon as you let it down. With yours, bar, I think you let, you, you let the water out, don't you? Once they've ejaculated. Yeah. If, if I feel that they do the uh, ejaculation, I take the water out to get the pressure back and then go down and wait till the penis goes off back and he falls down or then you feel how the AV comes down. Right, shall we get the mare out? Yeah. Uh, we'll just show you what we do with the mare. We've got a lovely mare tonight. She's, she's with us on the last one. This is. Uh, um, stuff at punch mare, so we just stand back here a little bit. We'll just show you how we prepare how we prepare the mare for, uh, for for a collection if they're jumping on the mare. So this is Darwin. Uh, so she, she she's been a great mare. She she we use her as a teaser mare. If we do jump on her. Uh, we've got quite a nice, uh, we just protect the mares by just by using uh, a leather case over it. So uh, she's fully protected uh, all around. Yeah. And, and that way they're fully protected if actually we use them. And on the, on the back of them, uh, the, they actually, uh, we use a, a tail guard and we just put a, a rectal glove on here as well. So really important you pull up all the hairs so we actually got these tail wraps uh, what what are they called vet cling. cling and this we use a lot for 
wrapping up the tails. It's easy to pull off, but then we put a rectal glove over, over the top of it. Uh, and there she is, she's all ready to go. So, uh, and it's, it's amazing how these mares, they, they're always in, uh, we've got two, all the teaser mares, incredible how much, weirdly, they really enjoy their job. Um, but right, if you want to get the stallion down, we're just going to go through the forward here. Um, we're going to get ready for, for the collection. So, we collect off, collect off, obviously, a lot of different stallions here, and it's trying to find out what the stallion's like. So, we have this board in the collection area. So, if I talk you through, so at the top, we have the stallion's name. Obviously, we've, we've blanked them out, so we can't see uh, what they do. And then what type of collection we do, we can, we can do whether it's a, a brown collection, whether they're on the dummy, you can see all these, and we put whether they need a pusher on the dummy, oh, sorry, what height the dummies to be, and whether they need a pusher, and whether they need a lead, what the libido is. So a five is like, uh, like a raging bull. Um, the type of AV they use is a medium AV, and so we can find out. So you've got one like this one here, it's a dummy mare. He's plus one, plus one, that's the height of the dummy. He has one person on the other side just to help him. He's, the, he's number three. He's a medium type of AV. It says not rosy to tease with, so obviously he doesn't like that mare. Uh, and, um, and we collect on the near side. So some of these ones we collect on the off side. Bart, do you collect off a few stallions on the other side or is it all on the one side? I have only one stallion I collect on the right side because uh, you, you told me, you showed me because he was, his penis was going down to one side all the time. Yeah. And then you explained me that there's too much power to this side. And then we tried to go to, to the other side. And since then he stays like it is. So thank you for this tip. I can't, I can't believe I've taught you. So, thank you for that. But that's good. Right. Yeah. So yes, so some of them we do offside. Uh, you can put this either, this one runs at dummy. Uh, so we have to be careful that one. You can see his libido is four. Um, and uh, so, and then some obviously ground collections, some don't need any pushers. Uh, collecting outdoor school, and only for, for me or EJ Tannel, so obviously it's a bit more trickier to do. Uh, needs mare on the other side of the dummy, some we actually bring the mare out and stand out to, to tease them. So every stallion we, we, we log so we can uh, look at, yeah, go on, do you have a question? Yeah, question from a couple of people actually. Um, what percentage of stallions would you say prefer jumping on a live mare, or, and what percentage on a dummy? I know Bart jumps everything on a, on a dummy, but we would do 90%, well, I'd say on a dummy, or ground. Uh, there might be 5%, maybe 10%, but I think we could make, get most of them on the dummy if we had more time, but time is of the essence. And sometimes some of these older stallions we find uh, slightly that, better. So. That's, yes, what I do. That, that, that's what I do, I only do on a dummy. Yeah, I have, yeah. I have a plenty of time, I can start with them in, in in September, October to learn, to teach, and then I have time till January, February, so um, I will never let them jump on a mare, never. Yeah, so I mean, we're gonna talk about this a bit later. With... Sorry? So my stallions only knew the dummy, nothing else. Yeah, um, and I, have, I, have, I must admit, this is one thing that we, I wouldn't say disagree with, but it's one thing we have to do differently. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we find some stallions just more comfortable on, on a mare, um, and so they're just sometimes a bit easier to get that collection a little bit better. So we have a regime, but you can see down here, virtually they're all dummy mares, a mare, a couple of mare ones there, but they're, they're virtually mostly dummies all, all the time, all round. Uh, right, are we then ready? Are you ready? Right, so we stand over here. So, the uh, um, first thing we do is obviously just tease the stallion. You have to get quite close. So, we go back into this room here. Yeah. We'll move out of the way, I think. This is the way it could go wrong now. Yeah, but anyway, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be, it'll be good. So, we'll just. First thing we just just tease them up. And you'll hear Jack now. Well, you might not be able to hear, but he talks to EJ and tells him how the stallion is going. Is his penis showing? So, she knows how much to tease him by or not.
Maybe he's a bit camera shy tonight. Does the mayor need Bumley pushing you out? Once it's rain tonight. You grab it again, you Some of these stallions, they take longer to tease them. Uh, and we just, it's, it's a bit like how close we can get to that, that mare with that, uh, without uh, getting too close. So it's easy to try. So the peas is now out, so Jack will just go in and, and, and wash the wash the pins. Now some people might not come out here. And you just really want to be using lukewarm water with this. You don't really want to, no detergents at all. Um, you'd be surprised how stallions really will take to this uh, perfectly all right. Um, and, 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 you know, get the old stallion, it takes a while to get used to it, but they really will take to it. You want to really clean it really by getting all of it. Well, we did a little bit of research with this that we reckon it removed 80% uh, of the bacteria uh, contamination in, your, in the ejaculate. So it's really, really important to wash the stallion prior to every single question. And once it's washed properly, then you just get a bit of towel and dab off. Some people say, it doesn't water contaminate it? But yes, you dab that all off before the actual question uh, itself. Um, so, I don't want to get in the way. No. Well, that's, that's typical. Fail collection, I knew up for that tonight. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's obviously got, got him out of bed tonight, so I didn't want to go. But always we do this, some stallions we literally just uh, walk around, uh, put away in the box for 15 minutes. We're going to try and just see if he'll, he'll just, um, just calm down a bit. And, you don't want to do a collection straight away. You literally just want to let them calm down. We put them in the, in the corner of the room just for a few minutes. But you get a few collection, uh, fail collections every now and again, Bart. Please. You see, you get some stallions that fail to uh, uh, collect. Yeah, I think for sure we have also the same. Most of the time, if you have this problem, it's a little bit of the libido that we we people we have not the time to wait, and they are not hot enough. So. Maybe you take a little bit, five more minutes of time, just waiting, and then the libo is better, and then you have no fail collection. But yeah, yeah. The, it happens. It, yeah. it happens. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, any questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, so Estelle has asked, can you train them to the dummy without conserving theirs, or do they always have to mount naturally first? No, no. Like Bart, we were saying before. <laughs> Bart, there was a question saying, can we? train them to a dummy without uh, jumping on a mare. And this is the way you train all your stallions to jump on a dummy without jumping on a mare. Yeah, I have, I have a dummy mare, I have a dummy mare or a teacher mare, what you call it, uh, on wheels. What I can put next to the dummy and then take it away if he wants to jump. 
Yeah. Um, but I never let them take, you have to teach. You take, sometimes it takes a few days. Yeah. Well, sometimes that's, I mean, it takes a few days to learn to jump on a dummy. But yeah, uh, you can help them. I think you have one or two videos to show later how you can teach and um, help them to jump on a dummy. Yeah, I mean, we, I must admit, with us, with time pressures, and people want, we actually jump a lot of bars onto a mare just to start with, because we want them to get used to the AV um, before they, 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 they do the connection. So, I mean, before we can go on a, on, a, on a dummy, so we quite often will, will do that. He looks a bit cleaner now, does he? Yeah. Derek actually says he likes to do teams. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Derek. Derek. Oh, right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I always notice you always give them a pack. Don't you, Bart? So, so Derek was watching with it. Yes, yeah. he was. Yes. yes, there's your boy performing. Uh, I must admit, he produces so much semen per collection. He's got the most. I'd say, but nature for a stallion, you can see he's absolutely spot on. So, uh, he's great. Um, right, so, yeah, I mean, you can see the nature of the stallion. He's, absolutely so, he's just not used to being dragged out of bed at seven o'clock in the evening to do that. So. Right, so while they get the next stallion in, um, and just gonna, have you got my clipboard there? What they took. Right, so. After that, we just want to, um, just our other insurer for tonight. So you're going to bring the next one straight down. Yes. Yeah, brilliant. So, uh, McLaren's insurance has uh, insured us tonight, not tonight, they're our sponsors us tonight. And as we know, we're in a collection area, so health and safety is absolutely paramount importance uh, to this. Um, so, you know, McLaren's do employer's liability, public liability. Uh, custody and care and control insurance, and they do the blood station. So they, they cover the whole nine yards. And I must admit, when you're doing this job, things can go wrong. Um, and so it is important that you're fully covered uh, for that. So on the dummy training side, um, yeah. so as Bart was saying, we quite often jump on a mare because we find sometimes if we uh, we've, we've got to turn these stallions around really because we quite often jump on the mare the first time day and then the second day we will put the mare maybe the other side or we don't even have to happen to do that and 90% of stallions just go to the other side jump straight on the dummy straight up so we quite often put the teams of mare this side but you have a, a, a mare on a plastic mare on wheels don't you that you put the other side Yes, uh, yes, yeah. yes. So you put it this side. Exactly. Yeah. So if you come around here, Lucinda. So what we will do, you'll see some videos later of how we train them on. So we'll bring the stallion in and quite often we'll literally hold the season mare there. And I can promise you, I think about 90 cents of stallions the second day they come in here. Uh, not all of them, but most of them, we can take them on the dump. Yeah, so we can do that. So we just want to, another poll question uh, for you. Uh, is that all right, uh, Rachel? Um, is we're going to put up, how many of you are actually stallion owners tonight? And there'll be a second question. How many actually collect off your stallions at home? Uh, if you are collecting off them. So, uh, which would be good to know. So that will come up now, is it? Yes. Yeah, so you can answer that. So on the dummy training side, uh, we actually obviously take stallions in for dummy training. So if you've got a dummy at home, we can 
you can bring them here and there may be some people tonight watching that we've trained your stallion onto the dummy mare. We also run collection courses here. I know with the COVID situation, we, we can't uh, do that at the moment, but fairly soon, hopefully we'll be able to. So you can actually come here. We actually collect off these stallions. We've got some, some teaser stallions that we collect off and we can actually collect off those. And then we can, um, uh, you know, you can actually do all the collections. You fill the AB, you wash the AB, and everything. Uh, the other thing I've got to shout out is obviously Star Side, we're doing a mini freeze package. So uh, we actually are doing a special deal uh, for freezing stallion seam of 20 doses, 900, well, under a thousand pounds. And that's something we're doing uh, fairly soon. Uh, and that will be doing from, I think it's from September to October, because that's our slightly quieter times of freezing. So we do that off of there. So the polls have come in. We've got 62% of you out there. So there must be about, according to this, about two or 300 stallion owners watching this tonight, which is brilliant. Uh, uh, that's great, because if, if I think there's uh, about four or 500 people watching. Uh, and do you collect off your own stallions? So 67% of those are no's and 33% uh, are, are yes. So that's, that's good to know. So a lot of people don't collect, obviously send their stallions away, obviously, for that. So yeah, we're doing mini freeze, but we can tell you a bit more about later. Different ways we can collect off these stallions. Um, uh, sorry, just finish off on the dummy mare. So we put the teaser mare here, and we quite often have the stallion here. Back and sometimes we just move the mare backwards and forwards. And Bart, I've seen you, you do this with your, your, your mare on wheels, don't you? You move the mare around a little bit, is that right? He's disappeared. Yeah. Bart, are you there? No. Don't worry, we'll carry on. But anyway, we, we tell me if he comes back. Um, but basically, we move the mare backwards and forwards, and this is encourages the stallion to go, to go on. Right, if you want to pop her away, India, it's great. So there's different types of collections. There's the open-ended AV collection that you saw before. Uh, there's one called a hot block. I'm going to show you that. If you're really struggling to collect off your stallion, you can actually use a really hot block and put it at the base of the beans, and that can really help uh, with um, so, and this, this stallion, we're going to do uh, a, a ground collection. Um, so, what we will do is, where's our best place for us to stand, EJ? Where's the best place for us to stand over here, is it? Uh, so, we, 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 we stand over here. Yeah. What? Ah, oh, Bart. Can you hear me, Bart? Yeah or no? I don't think he can hear you at the moment. But he's, there, oh. he's there, is he? No. Oh, connection issues, don't worry. Um, so, yeah, ready when you are, Jay. Do you want to bring him up to him? Yeah. Um, so this one we're doing a ground collection of. Now, again... I'm back now. Bart, can you hear me? Just, just connect to you. Yeah. Um, he, can, he doesn't all have to make the stallion doesn't always do it first time, but we're not going to do a second collection. We fail to collect off the first time. We're going to just put him back in his box because we haven't got time, but you'll get the gist of it anyway. How it, how it works. So he's not camera shy, too. What's the bit? Oh, I won't go there, but he's with one of the camera. Poor uh, chaps. Uh, <laughs> um, so the other questions. With the ground collections, as I say, most of the time um, we, we do it in the ground collection box. With this particular chap, we do it out in the, in the, in the, in the collection area. So. Um, somebody's actually asked, um, why do we have different coloured collection coats for handlers? Ah, very good question. So we have two different barns and we have everything for our export barn is in red and everything in our domestic barn is blue. So we can keep everything separate uh, on, that, on that side of things. So we have them uh, different, different stallions. Bart, can you hear us now? Have you got connection? Now I can hear you again. Good, right. Something the German, on. The German-English connection went for a bit. We'll talk about dummy training in a moment. Uh, well, taking a bit to tease up, so we'll leave you to carry on teasing while, we're, while we do it. Just let me know when you're ready over there to watch them on. Um, I have a question for you, Bart. Um, somebody's asked whether you use odour on the plastic teaser mare. So what? does it 
do, do you put a smell on the plastic teasma? Yes, yes. She has a blanket on, and then I put some um, some urine from some mares who are ovulating this day. We we get. Uh, I have some frozen <coughs> urine of them, and then mm -hmm. I put on the blanket a little bit of this. Yes. Uh, and, and Bart, with our teasing, you, you have that dummy mare on wheels and you wheel her around the dummy a little bit to different places, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I, put, her, I put her next to the dummy. The stallion, most of the time, <laughs> left, left at the end of the dummy and the, 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 mare for, the mare on wheels on the right side that the dummy is in between. And then I try to find a way and then if he react, I go slowly away, drive away with the dummy mare. Yeah, so don't know whether you saw, we put the teaser mare uh, the other side. Oh, uh, but it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, this, this guy is having seeds, so he's ready to watch. Uh, okay, if you want to watch him, it's a Going in, you touch the tummy and you grab the penis and it's just washing off again uh, with lukewarm water. And again, try and do this. And the amount of people said, oh, I'm going to get kicked into next week. You'd be surprised. You wash, you wash the penis off each, on your stallions all the time, don't you, Bart? Do you? For each collection, yes. Uh, For each it's collection. Very, it's very important, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, you, be, you will see later in, if you look in the microscope. Yeah. I don't. I don't need to see if they wash the same. If I see the semen on the microscope, I can tell you if they wash too early, too, if they wash in a good time, they don't wash it. You're absolutely spot on. We can tell how good they wash it off by looking at the semen on the microscope. It's such, you, you're right, it's such important, but it makes such a difference to getting that clean sample from, from, from that study. Um, yeah. And as I say, we, we did a little bit of a trial on it. We tested the bacterial levels um, but we don't want to kill the stallion's own natural defences. So we go over here. So no detergents, nothing like that. No, just lukewarm water. And I don't use. I must admit, I don't usually go too hot either. So um, because I find that if you get too hot, they don't uh, feel the difference between the AV if the, if the penis is already too hot. So we do it just tepid temperature on the door. Can you tell me when the teas are up and ready? But tell me when you're about to do it again. Uh, so sometimes, like we hear, we get the mare out and we, we walk the mare around to tease him up. Speak up. So sometimes we, we walk the, the mare around um, just to tease, tease the stallion, but I'll stay quiet a bit because I don't want to put him off. Ready? Yep, good chap. So he doesn't mind the food and all the stuff. Thanks, Jack, brother. So you can see, you might ask, why don't we do ground collections? You know, why don't we just jump them on? Some stallions, you have to find out what the stallion likes. It, you know, is it a mare, is it a dummy, is it on the ground? And, and what, but why would you do a ground collection and not on a dummy mare? Um, I do the ground collection normally if the stallion has some problems in the front feet, he should not jump or something like this. Uh, that the vet says it's not good to jump on a dummy or something like this. Then yep. we try to do it with a ground collection. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we, we again we do a few stallions, but we don't do a lot. And he just the stallion just prefers to do it on the ground, as you can see. And it's very we normally do it in a stable, or and sorry, not in a stable, in a in a small box. Uh, like that. Well done, Egypt. Thank good. you. Good. Um, so, right, can you be, do, do the AV now? Yeah. Just wash, wash that. So, yeah, yeah. so that's the, the connections. So we come over here. Um, just on the AV side, obviously we've got all the different types of AVs here. Uh, EJ, just going to show you just briefly. These are all the ones that we've done this morning. These these hooks are quite good. Um, these are all the, 
the ABs hanging up this morning that you can see. Uh, and then we have a bath of alcohol down here that we actually put once we've washed the ABs up, where we soak them in uh, afterwards. So, uh, so all we use in here, we use, we use a, a bit of hippie scrub. But your bar, your your AV won't need washing very much, will it? Because it's uh, because you have a liner. That's right. Again, I cannot hear you. Uh, um, I'm saying your uh, your AV as you use a liner, you don't need to do much of this. No, I um, I washed uh, <clears throat> for sure. I I clean them from the outside, but uh, we take the liner out. And so uh, once once a week or something, we put them in the auto class to to uh, clean. But uh, no, we don't need to wash them all the time. You only That's take good. the liner out, and then it's clean. So perfect. So um, first of all, we take the case off. It's basically just stripping it, going backwards. So we take the washer and the little screw cap off, and then we take the case off. We just wipe this down with some disinfectant and um, about once a week and um, we give it a bit of an oil to stop it getting too stiff but then you don't want it too floppy because it needs to be quite rigid to obviously hold the AV. Um, so with the AV you want to try and get all the water out if you can and um, this might take a little Yeah, it's alright, I'll carry talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> um, so obviously with the AV cleaning process, so I'm just going to give you I don't, can you hear me okay, everybody ever do now, yeah? Just a few tips on every to, some of the things. Use a filter, inline filter, a filter when you're collecting off your stallion. Wash the stallion off. These are some of the things that don't not very many people to miss out. So filter before the stallion, you know, actually in line. Use as tiniest amount of lube as you can. That lube can really contaminate. I know that it's meant to be non-spermicide. Be very careful. I, I had, we had one client where they used the lube and it actually killed all the semen uh, and it said use suitable for AI so be very careful what lube you use um, and also uh, use a tiny tiny amount it's a smaller and those are just a few quick wins that you can uh, you can obviously gain tonight and obviously try and have an AV set up uh, to what the stallion likes uh, as well so they get the water out and literally won't take too long on this it's literally we yeah. literally soak it in there and then you just scrub it. About four, five pumps of hippy scrub in here. We, if you can get really warm water, that's best. And um, we usually use the bottle brush. Yeah. The bottle brush, I don't to... Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Use a really long bottle brush. And you've got the hand on top. You go from left to right, all the way down. I made this water too hot for my hand. And <laughs> <laughs> <So. laughs> um, when you get to the end, just go all the way through, right to the end, and then back again, and then back up. And then for the top bit here, we just use a, a sponge just to get around the, around the top. Right. Like yeah. Okay. Great. So basically, wash that. Then we rinse it out. It's important you rinse all the AB out with lukewarm water because we don't want any residue of hippie scum in there. And then we have a bath of alcohol down here. Um, and we put the ABs in there and, and pull it through. All right. Any questions? Yeah. Are we able? Yeah. All right. Come on through. Um, Thanks, EJ. Thanks right. very much no for worries. tonight. Uh, we're going to carry on upstairs in a minute. Okay. So do we use overreactomized mares? Yes, yes, some of them are. Some, some are, some are. So it depends, yeah, depends on the mares. So. Mm -hmm. so these are the two stallions we're going to, we're not going to do too much on seed, well, we're not going to do anything on seed collection up, but let's just have a look at, uh, at some of this uh, semen that we have here. And You see that up there? That's some uh, pretty. That's, uh, that's 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 your boy for closure, uh, Derek. So I mean, that's uh, some pretty good semen up there. So that's just the uh, proof we got the samples. So that's um, yeah for closure. So yeah, he's a pretty well. He's an exceptionally fertile stallion. Um, so I must admit, we're very lucky to have him here, and he's uh, doing well. And he gives us a lot of semen actually for collection, so which is great. Um, so we're not going to talk any more about in here tonight about semen. So in two weeks' time, uh, we're going to do everything about in the lab. So how we process chilled semen, how we handle fresh semen, how we 
the centrifugation, how we deal with those subfertile stallions where they give you maybe a low volume, high concentrated product. So uh, how, we, how we calculate the sperm dose, we weigh these out. So we're, we're gonna leave you obviously on that bit and we're gonna come and do a whole hour, an hour and a half session in here all about the semen uh, processing side and all that. So we're gonna head on upstairs now. Uh, so I think Rachel, you're gonna do a very short intro. Please don't go away. It'll literally be one and a half minutes while we go upstairs. And I promise you, we've got some really, really good videos to show you. Bart is showing us how he cuts off his stallions in Germany. I can promise you, I know it's getting late, but don't miss this because it'll be really interesting some of the different collection techniques. It's not to be missed. So we'll see you in two minutes. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay now? Bart? Oh, Bart's gone. Rachel? No, I'm going. I'm here. <laughs> um, I forgot to say, I mean, I feel a bit bad. That was, um, that video was our sext foal born that's, foal that was born just uh, last week. Uh, so, um, so that's, uh, oh, hang on. Uh, I've got the wrong shared, shared bit there, so. There we go. So uh, that video is put together by Eva, and it's uh, yeah we had quite a. Um, some of you may have seen in the press, but we had the first ever sexed pole born from a rare breed, and Eva's put that combination together, which was which was really really lovely, um, and uh, it was a real special moment. We've worked all last year to get that you know to get that pregnancy, and now to have a lovely filly foal was great. But I'm going to show you right at the end. We're actually going to show you the birth if you want to if you hang around a little bit longer, uh, which will be, be be great too. So I just try and sort my computer out so we can. Oh, I don't think we can. Oh, share. So can you see that now? Hopefully on the screen. Um, can they see that? Uh, Bay, I presume am I on the screen there? Yes. Yeah. Cool. So we're just. Um, Going to go through the, uh, the some of the techniques. So we're going to do uh, semen collection methods from the past. Some of you may have not seen these. I'm sorry if you have, but uh, uh, present day collection and some of the collection methods from the subfertile with difficult stallions and how we train them uh, on the on the dummy as well. I think we've just got to obviously have a a, a mention uh, about our sponsors again. You know we have to you know the, the Quattro who've rubberized all our flooring uh, and our, our ground collection box they have to and they did all our stables obviously as well they, they rubberized all our stable floors as well and I mean, it's, it's a tom from mclaren isn't it yeah tom from mclaren insurance um you know he deals with our insurance and obviously we'll talk about that again in a minute so going back this is one of the very early day videos this is actually in germany uh how they used to collect off the stallions many years ago 
but obviously before they had the dummy mayors used to let the Stanley cover the mayor and then they used to literally just go in and, and scoop the the, the, uh, the semen out of the, the mayor and that's how they used to um, uh, breed up many many years ago um, see obviously with the health and safety there is not the uh, not the best way of doing things but obviously it's a good mayor and then that's how you get your your collection and, and, and away you go but luckily things have moved on since then uh, but after that they wanted to have another way of collecting off them and um, and the next way was they actually used a horse condom I don't know they used to put a condom on the stallion and used to let the stallion cover the mare and let's used to take the condom off and pull it out of that but luckily for you things have moved on a little bit there we're going to show you some different ways of how to collect off these stallions without those, but those were sort of the very early videos from the 1930s um, and how they used to collect off the stallions. So I think uh, the collection area, we've got to think of safety uh, when it comes to the collection area. It can be an area where things can go wrong, not just on the horse side, but on the human side. Um, and we've got to have it fairly close to the laboratory. Um, so uh, when you collect this sample, it's processed fairly quickly. It doesn't really want to be, uh, uh, not too dusty. Some people collect outdoors and outdoor arenas. We do the odd time actually outside, but you have to be careful of the, the arena, uh, any stuff kicking up onto the penis. Uh, you obviously want to have a dummy mare, a non-slip floor, that's stable for the teaser mares uh, and easy to wash down. Um, yeah, just with this, let's see if I can get my pen going on here, uh, the laser pointer. When we designed this, it's great. When we designed this whole building, I think we designed it purely in how to handle stallions and when we did it years ago our old place we used to bring the stallions past the dummy like this and that used to always cause issues because we had some as, as I think Bart would call them hot stallions you know stallions that are quite and they would literally as soon as you come through the door try and bolt at the dummy straight away so we have the door the far end so it's much safer we can bring the stallions in and if they are a bit hot then they can uh, they can go straight for it so it's 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 a nice spacious area, but also um, an area that's obviously safety as well. And uh, we have this padded floor. And as the same part, this is, we show some of yours, but we say before you have this, do you put this rubber matting behind the dummy? Is that because it wears out there or just to give them a bit extra grip? No, it's just to give them more, more grip. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we say to Stallion that they, they have more grip. Yeah, because we 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 found we tried different ones, and I know you were going to try uh, and find this one, and we we actually found this one. It's like a diamond form for, formation, and actually it's uh, it, it it works works well there. But do you? I think hopefully you agree with me. But if the stallions are really gripping and not slipping, and they're stable, they perform so much better, don't they? The sound is not so good. Oh, sorry. Um, I was saying that if the stallions are, are not slipping, and uh, I know it makes sense, but if they're really comfortable on the on the dummy and don't slip, they perform or they collect much better. Yeah, and and then they have no that is everything what makes them feel fine. You can see yeah. in the quality of the semen. <laughs> yes. So for that, it is very important to get them happy and fine. Um, if they have no stress, the semen will be good. Why are you in Germany? You put it in such a better way, <laughs> Bart, than I can. You explain it in such a perfect way. That's exactly right. If they're comfortable and happy and they're non-stressed, you straight away see a better quality semen. Um, yeah. and, and, and you're absolutely spot on there. So everything has to be right. We always say, I always say, every single little bit helps. So in other words, if they're not bandaged right, if they're not washed off right, if they're not prepared right, if you don't dry them off right, all these things can make a maybe a 1% difference to the semen quality at the end, which can make a big difference whether it's going to freeze well. If you put too much lube in there, if you don't filter the semen, uh, it can make a huge difference to that end product. So um, that every little bit right the way through makes a big difference. Yeah, that's what I always say. It's not not something uh, like, like spooky to do this job, but you have a job where you have about 150 to 200 
possibilities to make the quality you get versa. Yeah. So you have to be really strict, really careful, really always do the same quiet, good job. And yeah. then you get good semen. Yeah, no, definitely, and it, it shows so much more. And and obviously important to have a non-slip, sportive, protective, and easy to disinfect and, and, and clean. And uh, this is our ground collection box where we do the ground collection uh, as well. Uh, the equipment, uh, we've talked a bit about that already, but the filters, why, the, why the, there's different types of filters, uh, and it's separating the gel, so you can see uh, this gel that this fraction and this is all separated from this we don't really want this to well we don't want this to contaminate our same sample so this is why we want to be using the, these filters as 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 we go uh, and that we tend to use the milk filter i think most people use the odd stallion uh, especially when we do any uh, sexing semen and ones that have fine gel we use these um these 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 ones do you, if you get ones with fine gel do you put two filters in there sometimes Bart? Or do you just use one filter? Can you hear me? I only. Do you yes, use... I hear you. I, I only use one filter. The, I normally I only use this this round filter, yeah. this milk filter. Yeah, yeah. And then the lubes. I uh, say so you don't. And then use... if there is some glue inside, maybe I use the second one. Yeah. Um, there's all different types of lubricants out there. I did hear of one person even uh, that using this uh, tingle gel. Uh, they said the stallion would only perform for that. I, but uh, we tend to, obviously we make our own uh, equine reproduction supply where we, we buy our own and we know it's tested properly. But so it's again, it's making sure the lube is, is not toxic to, to the semen is, 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 is important to use that. We talked about the incubators, uh, the glassware. We have one for the glassware, uh, 37 degrees. For <laughs> filtering and one um, uh, for the AVs. There's all different types of AVs. We spoke about them tonight, the Hanover model that uh, Bart uses and the three different sizes of Missouri that we, we use here. Um, I think you have to find what the stallion likes and usually it's, you know, uh, it tends to be who's taught you, who, who's, whose place you've gone. Uh, so if you learn from Bart, you'd most probably use the, the, the Hanover AV and if you come here, we'd most probably teach you how to use the, the Missouri AV. So, uh, but you want to have the gland of the penis at the end of the AV, it's important if they ejaculate halfway down that AV, uh, that AV can be quite hot and it can, it can quite easily uh, cook the semen. So it comes in three different sizes and the medium, medium size is, is the main one uh, of that, all right? Um, the water, we tend to but can but up to 70 degrees because quite often we're collecting in the winter time incubate at 55 and we tend to be collecting around about the 45 50 degree mark um we find it they quite like it quite hot some like it hotter some like it colder but you've got to uh, find what suits that stallion uh, health and safety obviously hats uh, and steel toe gap boots um and uh, we quite often wear uh, sometimes gloves with the stallion handlers depending on it on the health and safety there will be some some videos that you'll see tonight that they might what might won't be wearing all the right the, the PPE but obviously uh, we, we do all things differently so we just have to have a bit of a disclaimer in that but generally uh, we always obviously for our side we always wear hard hats and steel toe cap boots but we go back to McLaren that uh, are sponsoring tonight and obviously these are the areas that they cover uh, uh, employers liability public liability and custody and care and control insurance and they do blood stock insurance so anybody who wants to get their details just give us a shout and we can talk a bit now so preparing the mare we spoke about this putting the net cover on uh we, we usually just put a twitch on them if we are jumping on them and we put this uh uh tail uh, guard over the top as well this is a bit of an over exaggeration but a few hairs down there if you do jump in a mare, and a lot, a lot of people do use mares just be careful a couple of hairs and i've seen it we've done it here it was sliced, it can slice the penis right down. So you wanna make sure they're fully wrapped up because if, if they're down the side of the AV, the penis goes into the AV and it can really slice them. So we have to be careful on that. So coming on to the collections, there are lots of different ways that we can collect off these uh, stallions. You can go on a live mare, you can go on a, a dummy mare, you can do a ground collection. So those two we, we saw tonight, you can do an offside collection. So 
we tend to find some stallions are weaker on one side than they are the other. So they might just prefer to collect on the opposite side than they are. Sometimes you find it a bit difficult to start with. You see this stallion here, he's got the dummy mare just the other side. Additional collection, we can use an open-ended AV. We're talking about hot cloth. We'll talk about the condom, which uh, Shirley was quite interested about, I think. Um, that method, the collection in, we've even collected a stallion in a set of stocks once. Uh, and you can do the chemical ejaculation, but we're not going to go through all these. Uh, teasing, uh, we always just make sure, some of these videos are quite old uh, from our old place. Um, and we always obviously want to make sure the stallion's properly teased up uh, prior to, to the collection. Washing off, we saw that before. We don't use disinfectants. Um, we wash off before every collection and it helps remove 80% of the bacteria contamination with that sample. And some stallions have been rolling in the shaving, so it's really important to wash off before every single collection. And you can see uh, the contamination there. Um, one question um, as well. What do you use to wash off in terms of, the, it's not a sponge, is it? It's... It's, uh, oh, that's a good point, yeah. We actually use a, a towel uh, because um, we, we don't want to leave anything on. We, we used to use the blue towel years ago. We found that we had a dye in there, so we just used the, the clear white towel when we when were washing them off. Um, so the subfertile stallion, some of the collection issues with that we have to watch, watch out for. Flushing out is so important with stallions. We're going to come on to this. Uh, so Bart, when you um, collect off a, a, a stallion uh, at the beginning of the season, do you flush them out a, a few times before you start sending semen out? Oh yes, I, even if I start with a stallion, I even collect three, four times without looking at anything. Collect, throw away, only see, uh, get semen, finish. And after three, four times, because I have the time, I know you have not the time, but okay. And then, <clears throat> then I will see if it is good for tilt and then for fresh semen. And then after it, we will see how it is for freezing. And you're going to see bark collect off a stallion before that you've never, ever seen before. It's a real special technique. We don't even do it here. So if you wait till the end, you'll see this, this collection method that he does. Okay. So, sorry, sorry, Bart, you were saying, so you, do you find it's more with the older stallions or is it, is it, do you do the same with all of them? So uh, no, normally I, I do the same at all. I start without looking at anything, just get semen. Yeah. And then after three, four times, we have a look what quality we have and then we can see what's going on. But first I have to clean them complete. And, and many of you, if you weren't here two weeks ago, um, just to let you know, Bart starts about half past three in the morning and you do about 30 to 40 collections every day. Is that correct? Yeah, now not more <clears throat> because the season is gone, but in, in the two, three months of the season, yes. Yeah. So you have a lie-in now, do you? Please? You have a sleep-in now. You get up later. Yeah, 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 I can do because I have two teams now. I have two collecting holes, so we can start a little bit later. So we start at half past four, five. <laughs> maybe. Half past four. And that's, that, that's better. That's easier. <laughs> so you start a bit later and you start at half past four. Wow. Right, okay. Yeah, I don't think I'll enforce that rule here, Bart, just yet. I might not have any, uh, have any staff left, but uh, yeah. Um, and uh, so, semen related issues that we were saying before with the subfertile flushing out. And as Bart alluded to there, it's so important to flush it. In some of these stallions, I've known the odd one that's taken nearly two weeks to really flush them out. It's done that very often, but. Uh, long as you see that semen getting better and better. So just because it's dead after a couple of days or doesn't look very good, flushing out can play a big part. So uh, gel separation, seminal plasma dilution is an issue. So we use an open-ended AV on some of these ones with seminal plasma issues. Hot cloth and, and, and we're talking about that. As I say before, we do supply this, this, this uh, supplement uh, and this, this can help uh, uh, with a lot of stallions. It can increase the semen quality on some stallions sort of between you know uh, 10 and 15 percent on some of they but they've got to be on it really for a couple of months so we were talking about uh flush out stallions and we were talking about but 
I see this more in the older stallions because their ability to store the semen isn't so good. So basically, the older the stallion, I feel the more flushing out uh, they are. And even we see some stallions, if they've had a period of sexual rest, even when they've been flushed out. So if, in other words, they've had seven days off, it can be not so good again. So the flushing out is so important. This is a, a stallion that we had here many, many years ago. Uh, and uh, uh, and he, he was a stallion called Demonstrator. Some of you may or may not remember him. He's a stallion I can mention because he's no longer with us. He is the most, it's one stallion I absolutely loved. He was part human. If you didn't collect off him, this is what his semen looked like after about five days. It's all dead, all dead. And then we collected off him on the second day or another collection and it would come a bit more. And then after about four collections, uh, it would start. And he had some of the best fertility rates ever, this stallion, but you had to flush him out. He, he stayed with us until he was about 33 before he passed away. But uh, if you didn't collect him after, after a week, it was virtually all dead. But this is the extreme case. So some stallions just need more flushing out than others. And saying that, we've had a, a 20 year old stallion the other day, first collection, never been collected from in its life, and the semen was fantastic straight away. So they're all, all different. The seminal plasma issues, we see this sometimes in the heavier horses. Uh, and uh, so you get a normal collection of an average volume is about 50 mils. Some of these stallions will give us, you know, we've had even one stallion give us over 200 mils, where, but when they give you a low volume, high concentrated product, the seminal plasma can have a negative effect. And we're gonna talk about this next week or two weeks time about the semen. So we actually add extender into the bottle. So that's another tip that you can learn. We don't do it on many of them, uh, but some of the freezing ones, we just notice it does help on, on, on some. I don't know whether, do you do this at all, Bart, or, or not? I use it also, yes. Yeah, oh good. Yeah. Was that, if, was that, was that a tip if, for me at this time? I can't remember. If, uh, if I uh, have a stallion who I think, most of the time it's a stallion who has really, really concentrated semen. I always put a little bit of extender in before. Yeah. Just to help directly that the semen has more space and have some stuff to feel feel well. No, so it's, uh, we, we do this on a lot of the freezing ones. We find it dilutes the semen out straight away and it's, it's the semen does like it in its, in its natural state. If it's not in the mare, it's not in the stallion, some stallion semen dies off quite quickly. So to add an extender to it, you dilute it out and it can really make a, a, a big difference. Uh, so we can yeah, that's yeah. that that's why the freezing stuff that's coming from your place is so super because <laughs> you think about this and then it's working thank you Bart. i pre much appreciate the plug there that's that's the yes so it is and I, and I can't keep going back to it enough to say every tiny little bit helps so putting a bit of extender in there can help washing the stallion or filtering it a small amount of gel collectively this can really shift a stallion that was not freezing very well to actually freezing very well. And uh, it's the attention to detail, which is so, so important. But we're good. In, yeah. in uh, four weeks time, we're going to talk all about the freezing process, which is going to be quite interesting. The dose size, how much you should be AIing a mare and so on. So teasing, right. So this is teasing line. I, sorry for the caricature, but I always imagine there's teasing lines. And I think, Bart, you've got a video in a minute of a, a stallion being a bit, a bit hot and a bit quick but i always imagine if he gets this line and he doesn't uh, uh and uh and he, you step over this line the stallion's gone and he's off uh so to tease a stallion i find you walk up to that imaginary line and tease back so trying to get the maximum amount of teasing from that stallion and this is where it's really important to know your stallion and the person handling that stallion really knows what they're doing to work out where that teasing line is in relation to a teaser mare or a dummy and to get that stallion nicely teased up for beforehand. So, um, some, so some stallions are, uh, you know, obviously fairly straightforward. They just jump on. And the beauty about the dummy mare, there's obviously less risk of injury uh, to them. We have to be careful of hygiene. I mean, a dummy mare is a great way of spreading disease around if it's not washed off properly. I think one of the biggest outbreaks of CM in America was caused when the, from a dummy mare cross contamination. Um, and, um, yeah, and so we've got to make sure these dummy mares are collected off. And obviously the height of the dummy can go up and down. 
And Bart's got a very posh dummy that it's all done by uh, hydraulics and going down. The ground collection, now we just want to show you, there's two ways of ground collection. You saw a ground collection tonight in the open and you saw it moving around. And this is the same standing, another standing that we're doing, just showing the problems of collecting in an open space. So this is how, you know, we don't, it can be done this way, but it's not the best way of, of standing, moving around. It's, uh, it, it's not so easy to do. Um, so it's, it's, it can be done, but we find it's actually much better if it, it's in a confined, confined area. They will do it, but it's just not as easy. So we tend to do it, and this is how you do it, I think, Bart, in, or in a closed confinement. Uh, it's in, in a stable, um, and it's trying to get the, the stallions into just a, a corner somewhere. Um, and it looks quite dangerous, but actually you'd be surprised how they, they do take to it quite well uh, once they're used to it. Um, and we've got a couple of stallions here we just we collect off because they just prefer to do it this way as, as well. Um, and then you, yeah, and you've always got Josh happy smiling there all the time. I don't know whether you've seen his, uh, Josh is quite a, quite a celebrity at the moment. He's actually, uh, there was a video uh, done on him here at the centre and he's got 17 million views, uh, which is quite extraordinary. So go Josh. Uh, actually, Bart, uh, you don't know this, but there's a German TV company are thinking about coming to film Josh here and what he does because they've, they've heard about in Germany about uh, uh, what his work does. So uh, that's uh, quite cool. But your collecting that you do in a stable, you just do it in the stable of the, of, of the stallion? Yes, yeah. in his own stable. Do you bring a mare up to the box or not? No, no. I just take a little bit of urine in the paper and then he starts and it's very easy. They know it exactly. It's yeah. even like this. Um, the people are going there with the paper. They wash. And then if they see me with my green coat, they start. They are like, and then it's very easy. They know me quite well. I thought you went met, you said about paper. I thought you gave them a horse and hound to read or something beforehand. But, <laughs> but no, but, you, but the paper as in to wash them off over with the urine on and then soon as they see you with a green coat that's uh, they're yeah. away the green light. yeah the green light so you don't walk around in the green coat in the daytime otherwise they think they're, they're yeah it's made that green coat yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh another method that we can do is i don't know whether you've ever used this bart dixon varner um showed me this method if you're struggling to collect off it's something called using a hot cloth we actually set a, gro a GoPro on someone on EJ's chest and when she was filming this. And uh, so you can see what happens. So we literally grab, penis, put it in and we get a hot cloth and we place it at the base of the penis. And this can make uh, some stallions that won't quite finish off. Uh, it can make a, a big difference to them. Have you ever, we, we very, very rarely use this, but have you ever used this method or not? Um, I have only one one or two stains who have a really bad libido and therefore this helps a lot yeah so that's another tip that people might not know is and you get you get it very very hot is that right yeah it's it's so hot you cannot hold it in your hand yeah for the first moment but at the end they it works yeah 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 so yeah. um i put that there question coming from Phil. Um, how do you train the stallions to accept the AV? Um, they generally, I mean, this is where I, I'm slightly different from Bar. I use a, a slightly different because we get them on the, a live mare and get them used to the AV first, uh, whereas Bar gets them on the dummy. But Bart has a longer period of time to get the, to get the stallions going. So we try and get them used to the AV to start with. As soon as they're happy with the AV, then we Put them on the dummy but most not all stallions but most will accept the av we, we find um another tip now this is a i i don't know whether you i haven't discussed this with you bart but uh, um i think this is a big mistake that people make a lot of the time and they don't even realize they've made it it might not happen with your av but i've seen so many times this uh, the end of the penis when the stallion thrusts forward 
the front legs come back. And I've seen a stallions before now, it hits that front leg and it can really hurt the stallion. And um, so to the person that is not very trained and it can really, really put the stallion off. So you have to hold that AV. I, I don't know, have you seen this happen at all, Bart? With your AV, it might not be so easy to do, I don't know. No, with my AV, the, the, you don't have this big problem. Yeah. So with the because it's close at the end. Yeah, that's what I thought. So the Missouri AV, this can be a problem. So hitting the AV, and you don't even realise it's happening. So if this AV gets close to that front leg, and sometimes you suddenly see the stallion back off, and you don't realise why it's backed off, yeah. and this is because, and it, it can bruise the end of the penis, and it can really put them off from wanting to jump that dummy. They, they, so that's something else to watch out for. Uh, so how do we train the stallions onto, onto the dummy? Uh, this is a Christmas card we did years ago, actually. Uh, meant to be a picture of me trying to force them to jump on. I think I may have sent you this Christmas card, didn't I, Bart? I can't remember. Uh, many years ago. Anyway, I can't really hear me. But anyway, so many, this is actually going back to the how they used to train the um, you know, this is an old dummy mare. You can see the rain system here that uh, Bart uses in, in Germany. They've been using it for many years. Um, and uh, they're collecting obviously on the offside. And this time they're using a, 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 a live teaser mare to, uh, to, to collect from. Um, but any of you out there think you've got a pretty tough job, pretty hard job and, and think, well, this, uh, this collecting business is, is quite tricky um or you think you've, you've been dealt a hard uh, card in life you just spare a thought for this guy this is this has to be the hardest job i think in the world luckily we don't do this anymore but you imagine a big irish draft stallion coming towards you or a suffolk stallion coming towards you with that uh, sitting in there i think uh, so i don't know what he was paid but i'm sure it wasn't paid enough anyway so training a stallion onto a dummy mare these are very old videos some of these are mine and this is a stallion that we bring into the breeding shed now. Um, and uh, we quite often show them the, 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 the teaser, um, the, the dummy mare. And, um, and then we show them that the, 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 the live mare and we tease them up. And this sometimes this process can take, take quite a while. We quite often with a new stallion, we'll walk them around the, the breeding shed um, and to get them used to it. Let's get them familiar with it. Some we can't even get near the dummy. They're so, some are quite nervous. Um, and uh, so we will quite often um, just uh, take a few moments, try and get the standing used to the area. And this standing, I don't think it was ever collected from before. Um, and so, you know, we, we'll try and present. And we, as I say, you know, we could try a little bit harder, but I, we quite often jump them on a, a live mate, just getting used to the AV to start with. Um, and then you see with this, this chap, he's, yeah, he's not too sure what to do. Um, this is me going back a long, long time. I think this must be about 15 years ago. So we wheel out charity and we quite often jump them on a live mare uh, just on the side of them. And we just collect off. Because uh, some stallions, we had one in recently that took, a, God, it took us two or three days just getting on a live mare, let her a, a dummy. And, and then we collect them off, off, the, off the mare and away they go. On a so this is the second day that they come in, and um, we, we see how he's teasing the dummy now. Now we're pretty close to actually getting him on there, and as you can see, he's literally just about to go on, but not quite. So what we would do with this stallion, um, you have to be careful in control of them because what you don't want them to do is uh, if they see the mare, just bolt to the mare. We put the mare outside, and you do the same thing, I think, with Bart, with your mare on wheels, don't you? The other side. And then they, we, we usually find we can get 80 to 90 percent of stallions on the dummy on the second day, uh, usually if we're collecting. Um, and then I think this is yeah day three, and they're straight on without even the mare out there. So it's it doesn't take long long to do. So Bart, I think this next one is you of training a, your stallion. Um, so you might just want to explain a little bit about this, uh, of what you're doing. Yes, this is a <coughs> young say There you see in the front, you see this, this mare on wheels. 
the plastic mare on the left side. And now this stallion, he just seen, he smells this mare. And now I give him, just because he don't want to jump, I give him the vagina. And then <clears throat> he will start to push. That's a normal reaction. And then normally he will jump. Sometimes they just, they, you see, now he start to jump. And then he have to come on the front door. So that was the first time he ever jumps. And like this, you help them. And then he will collect. You see, in my place here, the, the dummy, I can make the dummy, the, the dummy quite small. So it's easy for them to, to come on the, on the dummy. You see, if you see your video before, they go up a lot. And here, they just fall over the dummy and finish. It's quite easy. And then this next video. This is the same stallion, the second time. So now the, the, you see the, the male on wheels is at the end. It's not even used. It's on the end of the wall. And now I just leave it and wait till he start and he jump. And the next time he will do by himself. So this is another one who was the first time he, he had to learn. Uh, he wants to do everything, but not jump, and he was not concentrate on the mare. So he had to learn to calm down, to feel fine. So and now I will use this mare on wheels just to give him the sign that he has to come on the dummy. And I even, I leave always, I try always to keep the dummy in the middle. That if they jump, they have to jump to take the dummy. So you do it, so you make sure that, yeah, they're between the two of them. I love your mare on wheels. We have a, we have a plastic mare as well. So, but, uh, but yeah, not on wheels. I think that's something. And does but, the, do you put your wheel, the wheels, the wheels on the wheels are not so expensive. <laughs> Uh, and do you put urine on? You put urine on the dummy. Do you put urine, mare's urine on the dummy or not? Do you put mare's mare's urine on the dummy? The smell on the no, dummy. No, only on the blanket of the mare. Blanket on up. on the blanket. The, the this blanket what the mare has on, there is some some urine on. Yeah. Now you see, I help him, but he will not jump the first time. He finished like a ground collection. All right, yeah. yeah. Yeah? So that's the first time. And the second time he will jump. He tries to, but he has not the right technique. So he closed his front legs too early before he was on the dummy. Yeah. And I think this is a video of when I did one years ago, a uh, similar technique uh, of training it. And it's the same thing. So we line that you have to watch out sometimes the back leg, but uh, just line the stallion up. And I think it's quite good. It's lining the stallion up in the right place for them to jump on. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. And then this next one, I think is your, your hot stallion. Yeah, that is, okay. This is, how you should not do. This is what you say about the, the teaser line. This yeah. stallion is really hot. He's already washed and he's waiting till I come in with the vagina. And now you can see he's too far away from the phantom, from the dummy. Yeah. And he's yeah. just playing around with the guy. So now these people should be near to the dummy and then they can walk. And he's, he's, Normally very easy, but now it takes maybe too long. I get a phone call. I don't know what happened, but you see, and that's not, that's not a safe way. So we will not only show the good things. This was not so nice because the stain was too far away and it took too long to get uh, the vagina, the AV there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This happens also. 
Now you can see we take if we collect, we take the water off, so the pressure is off, and then I go down. Yeah. You see the water coming out. Yeah, I need to, yeah, because he was just, he was in the collection area too long. You were probably uh, talking to me in England or something or, or making too many phone calls. <laughs> yeah, something happens to, I don't know what happened, but after wash, you should be more fast. Yeah. And not yeah. Wait so long. I, and you're right. And I must admit, this one thing in the breeding shed, I, I like everything to be, abs well, me personally, like everything to be ready. So when we're washed off, the person is ready. Uh, with certain stallions to, to go. Certain stallions, they, they, they need to be in the breeding shed for a long time, and some, it's very quick, and, and uh, yeah, you have to... Uh, yeah. get so have, we so, have breeding stallions, they like to stay two hours, three hours there. So this is something, this next video, I reckon no one's ever seen before, and Bart, you'll have to explain this. This is stallions, I think, with uh, maybe have got a slight injury, and you use this uh, like a hoist system. Uh, <laughs> That is, this is a very special thing that is made by a pool from, from south of uh, uh, Germany. If you cannot even do ground collection because there are problems somewhere in the tendons or something like this, you can help them to take away the weight. So if they jump, and then if, um, here you can see if we go on top, there is a machine and you put um, uh, uh, with some, like you open a garage or something, and then it takes, it pulls up the stallion for 250 kilos. So yeah. we have no weight anymore on his back feet. So you pack the, the tenders of the back feet, but that's only, they are really special. It's just for showing this, this complete, uh, how it works for for this uh, um, company also, but yeah, it works very well. We have one or two stains who we use this. I think it's it's a great because protect the tendons on the back. You're right because we do have some stains that really lean on us and really come over in our breeding shed because they're they're quite weak behind and some of these older stallions and, and uh, yeah, I think it would be uh, sort of a, see even be with this. It's not also we wash them do everything the same like you do. Yeah. Almost yeah. the same. Almost the same, yeah. Um uh, and then I think this next video is the is uh, is actually jumping the dummy, isn't it? So and that, that red rope is like a quick release, is it, I presume? Yeah. Uh, no, because now here if now we are waiting till he is good and then he can jump. And then if he jumps, we pull him up more and more and more. Because the problem is, if you have some problems at the tendons or something at the back feet, the most worst thing is to go backwards from the dummy because they are laying on the dummy and then they go back. And so you help them to push them up and finish. Mm -hmm. Just to take a little bit of weight from the body. That's good. Yeah. I need to, uh, I think it'll cost quite, I'd love to put something like this in because it'd be quite interesting to try on some stallions that, you know, really are quite weak behind. Um, and, uh, but I think this, uh, the stallion now I serve as budget isn't, isn't, isn't quite ready yet. <laughs> so, um, I cannot hear what you're saying. No, I was saying that it would be great to have this uh, system in, but uh, I don't think my budget will go this far this year. So, but it's uh, yeah, fascinating to see on how well it works on some stallions. So now it will go on in a minute, will it? Yeah. Well, we're nearly. I reaching. didn't hear anything now. Don't, don't worry, Bart. This is. Yeah. Okay. You keep talking, Bart. We can. I can hear you, Bart. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, so now we do the collection, and you can see. But the, the woman over there has a small thing, but, and then she pulled it up. Here he's pulled up that he don't get uh, the pressure um, on, on his back feet. So and now if he's standing there and he's finished. Oh, now I cannot see anything. Yeah, there he is. Um, and now we pull 
now you can see he's coming down. The pressure yeah. is going off, and now he's standing on his own feet. So that I mean that was a really uh, nice nice thing. To yeah, have. no, it works well. It takes the pressure off. Yeah, interesting. Well, that's, well, thanks very much, for that Bart. It's a great insight. Now we've a few other animals that we collected off. Um, I did some work out in uh, in in Dubai uh, with with camel semen. Camels collecting off camels actually that lasted uh, about uh, about ten to fifteen minutes when you're collecting off a camel, believe it or not. And have you ever wondered what the most expensive camel out there is? It racing camels or beauty camels? We should have had a poll tonight actually saying that. What's the most expensive camel out there? Which one it is? But believe it or not. It's the beauty camel, which is the, uh, uh, so, you know, this, uh, these are just some of the other species that we've, we've worked with over the years. So just coming to a close now, because you've mostly been here nearly two hours. Um, we do do uh, dummy training for people. So you can send your stallions in uh, and we charge the 125 pounds a day. and We do up to three sessions a day uh, collecting on that. Then we can do it in a couple of days. Normally the stallions are done and dusted within a week. Um, some stallions take longer than others. Some stallions we can't get on the dummy for that time period. So, so um, you know, we've, uh, we do offer that service uh, if you're interested. We also offer a semen collection courses here. So people, they can come here. We can actually, you physically collect off the stallions. Um, it's a one day course uh, up to one to four people of, of yourselves. And, um, and yeah, we charge 525 pounds for that for the first person, a hundred pounds person after that. And we run these from September onwards when things are a bit quieter. So you can come here and learn all about that. If you're interested, just let us know on that side. Uh, we did speak before about the mini freeze. Um, um, and, uh, we, we start this mini freeze offer from the 30th of August through to 25th of, of October. So if you're thinking about having a stallions frozen, um, this offer uh, applies and it's less than a thousand pounds for up to 20, do 20 doses. And this was really popular last year. Um, so there's a, a few things that we're doing here fairly soon. Just to summarize really, um, really to, to, to maximize your stallions fertility, um, you know, it's essential that you find the right collection method that best suits your stallion and the se and, and his semen to enable him to provide the best possible quality semen at point of ejaculation. So as Bart, Bart was saying before, right the way through, it's, it's, it's all the finer details and making sure exactly what that stallion, uh, stallion likes So, uh, on that. Just on, uh, on the webinars, um, in two weeks time, uh, we are carrying on the stallion management series and doing everything in the lab. So how we process the semen, all these new technologies and what, including the ice berm, people are asking about the ice berm as well, how that we can use that all about centrifugation. Centrifugation is so important. Do you, Bart, do you centrifuge all your chilled semen or some of it, or do you, do you use centrifugation techniques? Can you hear me? Okay. Maybe not. No, no. Uh, any questions, Faye? Quite a few coming in. Um, a lot about uh, what do you do to help a stallion that collects well, but then rushes off the dummy sometimes before finishing his job? So the question is, is, uh, is what a stallion literally flies off the dummy after he's ejaculated very quickly. Is that right? So he's he, not he, ejaculated. He, oh, he doesn't ejaculate. No, no, he doesn't. He flies off before he's finished. So he flies off. So this is a question that's come in. I don't know whether you can hear me, Bart, at all, but the stallion comes in, he starts to um, thrust in and then he, and, he, and he backs off. Now you have to, one of the things I would always look at there is obviously the stallion is not comfortable with that surroundings. He's not comfortable with the collection. There may be well be a pain. I'm relation. sorry, your voice is just breaking all the time. I just hear a few words. I will ring you, Bart. Can I call you on your phone and people on loudspeaker at the okay. same time? Yeah. And see if that works. Yeah. I'll call you now. Oh, it's on your phone. You're actually watching this on your phone as well, aren't you? So I don't know whether you can, whether that will work as well. I don't know. No, it won't. Yeah, it won't work. So I don't know. But anyway, um, going back to the question the person made was, um, is I, it could well be a pain related issue if the stallion backs away before it, 
very quickly. There's something there that he's not happy with. So I would really, maybe something a pain related. It might not be, but that is something we get all the stallions checked. At They've actually, all, we've just had the uh, chiropractor here yesterday going through all the stallions actually. So we get the chiropractor two or three times or a couple of times through the season to look at them. So that is something we should look at. And the height of the dummy as well. There's quite a few questions coming in about that. Um, what's the ideal height and how do you start off? The height of the dummy, you want to get it roughly maybe a little bit lower than the stallion itself, but you really have to see what the stallion's comfortable. I don't know, Bart, you may be able to hear me or not, but the, as a question in, how do you set the height of your dummy mare? No, I don't think you can hear me. So we set it. I, I hear just, uh, I, can, you, can you hear me? Yep, yep, I can hear you, yeah. Okay, okay. I hear just a few words. I think you're speaking about how I uh, see the, the size of the dummy mare yep. or what you yep. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How, how do you say? I, yeah. I look at my I look my stallion. Uh, if 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 I don't know nothing, I look at the stallion, and uh, I check. Uh, I I normally use the size of the knee, the eye of the knee, that if they are on the dummy, the knee is not too much stressed up. So. Um, I use the dummy quite quite small, yeah. that they can lay down on a dummy and not have to go up too much. But yeah, if you have a young stallion and he's jump and walking around with the front legs, what they like to do if they are young, then you have to go up more and more. And then maybe the end is going down and you go up in the front that they stay and learn to lay down on the dummy. Mm. But yeah. that yeah, you have to just to see what the stallion offers you and what uh, what he will do, and then react. Yeah, like this. No, no, good. Um, another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how often can you collect the stallion, and over what period of time? Uh, so, how often? There's a question coming. How often can you collect off a stallion, and after what period of time? That is so dependent on the stallion. So we usually collect off the stallions uh, if they're really busy, maybe maybe some of them seven days a week, uh, some of them uh, four or five times a week. It depends on the stallion, but it is so dependent on the stallion, on the libido and how much semen they're producing on, 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 the, on each one. So um, yeah, so it, it does vary from, from, from stallion to stallion on, on that. Um, and, oh, Oh, hang on. Sorry. Um, and so, um, yeah, it varies really. So you can, I mean, a thoroughbred world, they're covering three or four mares a day. So, you know, stallions can do, uh, you know, obviously be used quite a lot, but it is so stallion dependent on that. And uh, yeah, some need to be done every other day because their sperm reserves can't be picked up. Usually you can tell this by the size of the testicles as well. Anything else, or is yeah? Um, a question back on when you uh, put extender into the bottle um, through the, the yeah. hole, um, and they just want to know um, how do you know what to, how to calculate the concentration of the extender in that scenario? Yeah, we all when we put extender in the bottle, we're always putting about sort of twenty mils, uh, sometimes forty mils, depending on what the previous collection of that stallion was. So if he gives you 80 mils or something, we'll put 40 mils in there. If he gives you 50 mils, we might put 20 mils in there. So anyway, just going back, I think we've most probably all had enough of me. Uh, I know you always want a bit more of Bart, uh, but uh, hopefully I'll come back again some other time. But just to finish off, so we've got a webinar in, in two weeks time here, all about fresh and chill seam processing. Um, and in the on the 13th of august we're doing all about frozen semen what the optimal insemination dose is so if you've got mare owners out there want to know is it one straw is it five straws how much should i put in how much semen should be put in there in each mare so we're going to talk all about that side as well but we've got a couple more slides there's not many but we've had a a, a great um event happen just recently and it's been in the place where we're trying to get this mare and uh, in fall last year with sex semen we managed to do it and it's been really exciting this is a short video that the suffolk horse society has put together and uh, just uh, of, of the fall after 11 months of waiting um 
Ruby produced a pretty bowl. Um, and it's not just any old foal. This is a foal born by Set Seaman, who leads the first ever in the world uh, for a rare breed, animal to use Set Seaman. And using these technologies can really help this breed. There's only about 70 or 80 females left in the country. There's only 300 left in the world. They need all the tools of the industry. And it's quite incredible now what we can do with science and technologies. And using this technology, maybe, just maybe, we can help stop these breeds from going extinct. But this is holds the future. Little girl here. Little girl here. steps. So that, that's uh, sort of pretty exciting uh, stuff we just had recently. And, and hopefully, I think, I'd like to think we'll do a webinar, because uh, we've got still quite a few to do, all about new technologies, all about sexing semen and about rare breeds. So I'm hopefully going to put that on, or maybe in about sort of, uh, well, we're doing every two weeks. So it's going to be in a month or so's time. So wait for that one. We're going to do hopefully some more sex semen suffolk and other breeds as well. And um, just before we close tonight, we've got a few more announcements to make. All this tonight, uh, you know, the, our charity that we've been chosen for all these webinars is the Horse Trust. So uh, please, if you can, you will get an email after this by, from Rachel and uh, she will send uh, you this and you've got a link there. So please donate a uh, small or large about a bit of money for the Horse Trust. We greatly appreciate it. There's other webinars on uh, as well. Uh, so the British Breeding Bailey's Horse Feeds Maturity uh, Week Highlights uh, webinar is on Tuesday, the 21st of July. Is that next week? Oh, time flies. Yes, that's next Tuesday, not to be missed. Uh, all about the highlights. And wow, and certainly don't want to miss this one. Uh, you know, uh, what a, Jenny Lauriston Clark, what a British icon she is. And I, you know, she's been absolutely amazing. She was, I think, even doing AI before I was many years ago. Um, so I think this is, this is on Wednesday night as well. I mean, if it's just, this is one you've got to be tuning into because Jenny's, a, I'd say, just a, such an amazing person, obviously, and been breeding horses for many, many years. And what she doesn't know isn't worth knowing. So that's going to be a really exciting one. So just before we finish off, uh, just on tonight, uh, so really just to thank you for your attention uh, and really if we can uh, come back on to me if possible so if I do stop sharing and I'm back there now um, really um, uh, the winner tonight that we're picking has been picked at random I don't know whether he's still watching uh, Tracy but it's Tracy Piper I don't know whether you've got stallions or not but you've got a hundred pound voucher to use on any of the products that stallion AI services provide so uh, as we said, we've got more webinars coming up, uh, but I've got, you know, really a big, big thank you. He's a great, great friend of mine. I don't know whether you can hear me or not, Bart, but uh, I really, really appreciate you. And you have, uh, of all the comments we got coming back uh, uh, last one, they absolutely loved your input. They really did. Your knowledge of the stallion uh, is just unprecedented. And I've learned so much off you over the years and uh, it's great. Yes, we don't always do things exactly the same, but I think that's good. You know, there's always two ways to do things. So uh, please can I ask you, because there's still uh, several hundred people watching this still now, good. please send back uh, your comments. We'd love to hear from you. We, I must admit, what keeps me going on this, Neverly, is your comments coming back on Facebook, hopefully not negative ones, but good comments saying, we want a bit more of this. We want a bit of that. Uh, we like a bit of Bart. And uh, that really 
grabs our enthusiasm to carry on pushing these out, I must admit. So good feedback. You can always email us if you want anything else. We've got to thank the two sponsors tonight, uh, Quattro uh, Rubber Matting. Without them, we couldn't put these on uh, tonight without our sponsors. If you do want to sponsor this event, please let us know. I mean, obviously, we give you a good plug. All this money does not come to us. It goes to the British Breeding, and I promise it's non-for-profit this. There's no, you know, Rachel and her team do work tirelessly to put this on, and they're not cheap. And so all this money goes to the British Breeding just to put these events on. So it's, it's not been uh, previously uh, uh, spent on drinks or anything like that. It's purely to put these webinars on. So, and also McLaren Insurance, um, uh, we thank you tonight as well for, for, for sponsoring the event. So thank you, Bart. Thank all my team. I keep thinking we've got to thank uh, Faye here, who's uh, always right to the end, uh, asking the questions. We've still got so many questions to go through. Um, please give us a call or send them through if there's anything else. But obviously, last than not, I couldn't put these on without the British breeding. Um, Rachel, I know I keep saying it, but you're fantastic with the work you do behind the scenes. It really is. I think we're getting better at these. Well, I like to think that I'm getting more relaxed to putting these on now. I know, um, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes we, it, the videos might be jumping about a bit and stuff, but, you know, it's, what they're doing behind the scenes is great. Eva, putting these videos together, wow, fantastic. And, and, um, and sort of Jane as well, all the work you do in promoting this events as well is great. So I can't speak highly enough of the, the work you do. So really, so it's a, it's a bit like the two Ronnies. It's good night for me and it's good night from, well, you. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but we'll catch up again soon and I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, we'll, we'll catch up soon. All the best. Thank you. Bye. Ciao.